It's happening. Adults across the country can buy cannabis. People have a lot of questions, so I invite some friends over to talk about it. Joining me today is Michael Lickver from Cannabis Wheaton. Not a lot of people know, so we don't get that ramp up period. Anthony George, a stock market trader. Older people still are still so scared of marijuana. And Tamara Hirsch, a dispensary founder. Well, that would be the best way to transition the black market into a taxable base that's regulated. I'm Chuck Rafici, and we're talking to this. Canada has a large illegal cannabis market. Should the government be doing more to help these businesses become legal? That's something we talk about all the time, how the talent and the experience lies in the gray market or the informal market as I like to refer to it as. And I think, you know, maybe in the beginning it was strict and it'd be really nice to see more lax uh, ability for entrance, uh, insecurities or, or whatever in all aspects of the market. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the government's goal. It's one of their policy objectives. Um, I'll disagree on that one. I'll go back to it. Well, you can't disagree because it's what they state. And I'll say they're doing a good job at it. I'm just saying that that's their policy objective is to eliminate the black market. Maybe not by helping people get jobs, but the Well, your, that would be the best way more, to transition the black market into a taxable base that's regulated. Sure. I mean, I don't think that you would want to do that for the entire black market because I think there's definitely some bad actors within the black market, but there are a ton of those people that should absolutely have access to the regulated market. And I I 100% agree that there's a ton of talent there and they, you know, all of those people really wrote the textbook on, on how to grow properly and, and at a certain scale. Um, so was your question, should the government do more about transitioning or about eliminating? Transitioning, helping people that operate in the in the black market or, yeah. or, or, or gray market. Informal. Informal market. Uh, move into the legal market. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think they should, for sure. It's only, I mean, it falls in line with their policy objective of trying to eliminate the black market. So if one of the best ways of doing that is by providing a f legal framework where the black market can move over, then absolutely. We, we've seen beautiful models, you know, we can look to California, Amsterdam, we can see what works, you know, the sky didn't fall. So, I mean, we don't have to come up with fear-mongering reasons why not to do it or why it needs to be controlled. It, it really is what it is, and it should be called the monopoly it is. Like, well, Ontario is certainly a monopoly, but we're going to see across Canada, we're going to see very many different... Very. We have fully privatized, we have uh, BC, municipal licensing of, of federally legal dispensaries that will probably get grandfathered into a, a federal system. A very unique situation, we have the Maritimes that have gone maybe more, more government, but maybe hybrid. And so I think we're gonna see each model across the country. In my mind, if you're, if you're an entrepreneur that wants to be into the retail game, you, you have to be willing to maybe relocate provinces. But I mean, is it, is, it not, is it not open? But why should we have to? I wanna see a Supreme Court challenge, a law that needs to be changed. So that's the eventuality. I mean, why should everyone just, well, I guess, I can speak for myself, not everyone, you know. You could bail and just go through the route of least resistance or you can make change where it matters. I've never voted for a conservative in my life, but Doug Ford says he's gonna let it be both ways in Ontario, right? So and I believe in that and I don't think the government should control this. The only hope, you know, if we're bringing it legal, why can't we have, you know, the private people sell weed? I get the government's gotta be in the middle to tax it all just like they do on everything, but why can't you know entrepreneurs make money off this? Why does the government have to control this part of it? I hope they don't. I hope that and I hope that changes in Ontario because 40 stores for how many million people in this province? The black market's going to flourish. Yeah. And and that is the problem they're trying to but deal with. You know, but that's an old, older people still are still so scared of marijuana. And as the 40 year olds come into power and start controlling stuff, it'll be more wide open, I hope. I hope. It, it always shocks me that we're so focused on brick and mortar for the retail 
recreational or adult use experience because the entire world is shifting to get it to my house in an hour without me having to leave, right? The whole world is Amazon Prime right now, and that's a, that's where the world is going. So this short-term, temporary, this is really cool that I can go into a store But and it won't be, there not, won't be any experience. Right, it won't be cool, that's, I was getting, <laughs> this, but this is kind of cool because for the first time in my life, I can go to a store, whether it's government owned or whether it's private, and purchase cannabis, that novelty, once the learning curve is reached for a lot of new customers, will very quickly wear off, in my opinion. They're gonna have a great online ordering system, it sounds like, now they're using Shopify. Uh, the point I'm getting at is I think changes will come. It'll take time on the medical front. I think it makes a ton of sense to have brick and mortar where you are walking in and you're getting guidance from what a pharmacist would be in the medical cannabis world because there's a real need for that. On the rec side, I think it, it might eventually adjust itself, but I think it's less important. I think people will eventually just order online like they are now for every other item in the world from food to a hammer. Um, and I think that's where it'll eventually go. And to the point that the black market is gonna flourish, the black market will always flourish if the product offerings are wider in selection and for the foreseeable future that, that that's going to be the case. Um, but I think the market will, will dictate that it needs to get there or else somebody else is going to be filling the gap. Well, and it needs some, some personality, some branding. So you're gonna order online, you're gonna see a whole bunch of what, bags with warning labels on them. I mean, in that's child food containers, <laughs> and, you know, that's not gonna work. Like that's not really gonna help people decide between what they want and, or, and if they can't make any claims as to what the product um, does or how it differentiates from the, the package next to it, then how is someone supposed to even choose recreationally? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that, that brings us into products, right? Because we talk about retail. There are a ton of products that we're going to have maybe in a year. You know, they're the marijuana brownie, edibles, vape pens. So they're not here now, but I guess, you know, they, they will come. And so it looks like the government has made provisions for some kind of craft micro licensing, micro processing. So, I mean, is that going to bring in the, the wide range of products and brands? Depends the black how they, they, they market it or internally. I mean, I don't mean like advertising. I mean like internally with the product and the accessibility. Like something like Chapters is an experience. You go there, you've got a Starbucks in there. It's a nice warm environment. You can sit and read your books. You've got people not bothering you, but there if you need their help. So you've got all of these things that draw you out and you may order your books online going forward, but you've got those flagship spots that are experiences that you associate when you order online. It's, there's an emotional connect. Without that, I don't see how that's gonna make a dent in the black market. You've got to appeal but I don't, to people. I don't think Bud's gonna be key though four years away. I think it's gonna be vapes, right? 20% of the market will be premium Bud. Uh, we'll just look at BDS analytics and you'll see the rest of it's going to be vape and a small percentage of So other that's things. why I, I, I can't say I don't disagree, like if you want your vapes. Yeah, look, I mean, you, you bring up the branding and, and marketing point and it's, uh, it's a real problem. The more the black market that doesn't have to deal with any of those restrictions has an advantage. That's, it's it's give that Give the people simple. what they want. And in a medical yeah. perspective, give the people what they need. I mean, like, <laughs> we're feeding the black market. Like, come legalization, it's going to be a disaster. Well, you have to start somewhere. I mean, I'd certainly rather have bad legalization than no legalization. But baby they steps. Are, Agreed. They are, ba they are baby yes. steps. Let me, let me ask kind of one, one final question. What is the one thing that government, whether it's federally or provincially, can do to make the black market move into the legal market better, faster? Municipal regulations would be the best place to start. There are five powers the municipality has right now to be able to regulate the retail. local market for retailing. I think they're already, I mean, I'm behind, the gov like you said earlier, like with the government making this big step to legalize it, that's the first step. And how do we get the black market in? It has to be on the retail side because you have to control the growing part. The growing part still has to be supervised by the government. Because that's the that's where the money's being raised. That's where the structure's going to be. That's where the supply is going to be there. We don't want to have a bunch of companies that raise a bunch of money and all go bankrupt because there's too many companies, and then we have no supply, and then the black market grabs the whole thing again. But the safest way to do it is on the retail side. 
Yeah, I think, it, I mean, to answer your question, I think they just need to remain open-minded, flexible, and continue to listen to the constituents, listen to people and what they want. Consumers will dictate whether the black market continues to exist. Exactly. Hate to be a buzzkill, but we'll have to wrap the conversation here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Jack.